Today we're looking at the definitive best settings for Modern Warfare 3, ensuring we're maximizing our FPS, improving visibility of our enemies, as well as reducing our input latency. Starting off today in the display tab of the graphic settings, display mode should be set to full screen exclusive for anyone who cares about performance. Borderless won't actually lose you any FPS, but it will affect input latency, especially when the going gets tough and your system starts getting that little bit more stressed. Having it set to exclusive is just gonna give it all of the resources it needs while you're tabbed in. Then display monitor and display adapter, you can just leave these both at their defaults. So you should automatically have the correct monitor and GPU set here. Screen refresh rate, you should be able to just set this to auto, which will automatically select whatever number is nearest to the refresh rate of your monitor. For me, that's 240. Hertz, so this 239 option is the one for me. Then display resolution, same thing, just choose auto and it will pick the native resolution of your monitor. For me, that's 1440p. Aspect ratio, you should be able to leave this to automatic. If you are running an ultra wide monitor like a 32 by 9 or a 21 by 9, this should handle that. Restart shaders preloading is an option that you can run to delete your shader cache and then reload them from scratch. Uh, this can be helpful if you run into any weird graphical glitches or your shaders do get corrupt. This should run automatically when you do a driver update or when you change GPU, but it's a safe bet to come in here and run this anytime you're having any weird issues it should sort them all out for you then you want to open up your brightness which by default will be set to 50 i recommend that you don't use these guidelines for your brightness and instead just go for a value of between about 55 and 65 this will just brighten up a lot of those dark spots in certain corners of certain maps uh, makes it so enemies can't hide from you as easy i've been doing this since modern warfare 2019 and i highly recommend that you do this too nvidia reflex low latency doesn't impact fps but but understandably, as it says so in the name, it does help with system latency. You wanna set this to either on or on plus boost, depending on what your situation is with your GPU and your CPU. If you have a much stronger GPU than a CPU, then on plus boost is gonna be your better option. If you're in my situation where your GPU and your CPU are kind of evenly matched, then simply putting this to on will actually help with the latency more. But if you don't know which situation you're in, just try both of these out, see which one feels better. You probably won't even notice much difference. Just make sure it's not set to off. Eco mode preset, I wouldn't play around with. I would just leave it at custom. V-Sync for gameplay and menus, make sure both of these are off. Turning these on will help with screen tearing, which you might experience where you see those lines coming across your screen, especially when you're turning your character on a lower refresh rate monitor, but it introduces a a lot of input latency. Really, really bad, not good for performance. Turn both of these off. Custom frame rate limit, everyone seems to put this to unlimited. I would highly recommend against that. Instead, put it to custom, click on show more, and then put your gameplay custom frame rate limit to just above the refresh rate of your monitor. So for me, I'm gonna put this to 241. Menu custom frame rate limit. I put this at about 120, sometimes down at 100. This just keeps my menu feeling nice and smooth, but it's not maxing out my system while I'm doing my class setups. It's not necessary. You can give your system a little bit of a break, actually allow a bit of multitasking potentially if you're trying to look at something on a YouTube video over on your other monitor. This is going to be massively helpful for that. Then for the out of focus custom frame rate limit, I like turning this all the way down to the lowest. If I'm alt tabbed out the game doing something over here, I do not need my game to be running pretty much at all. It can go to the lowest amount of usage while I'm doing my multitasking. Then when I tab back in, I'll come back to one of these two frame rates. Focus mode is a setting which I haven't even seen do anything. It's meant to display an overlay around the game window when the game's in full focus, useful for widescreen monitors. I don't see it doing anything, but I typically am turning it to zero. So it hopefully just doesn't do anything in the background. And lastly in display, high dynamic range, you need to turn this off even if you have a HDR monitor. HDR, great for making your your single player campaign look good, but not good at all for visibility inside of multiplayer. Moving on to the quality tab, graphic preset, doesn't matter what you set here, it's gonna automatically change to custom anyway when we change things down below. Render resolution, leave this at 100%. You might feel the need to turn this down if you're losing frames and just wanna get some FPS back at the end of this video, but the upscaling and sharpening, which I'll cover in just a second, is a far better way to gain some performance should you need it. So for pretty much everyone, leave this to 100% of your native resolution. Dynamic resolution, same thing goes for this. This is another setting which can help you get some FPS back if you really need it, but it's nowhere near as good as the upscaling and sharpening. Speaking of upscaling and sharpening, let's go in depth on this now. There's actually three different settings that I would recommend in here, depending on your specific scenario. Scenario one, 
is that your system runs the game really nicely. You're absolutely happy with the FPS that you're getting, especially after you've gone through all the other settings in this video, and you just want to make your game look a little bit better, get a little bit better visibility. For that, you want to run Fidelity FX CAS, and I recommend a cache strength of 80. This is a sharpening method where you set your strength of your sharpening down here, and it just crisps the image up really, really nicely. The second and third scenarios are where your system is struggling to actually get the FPS that you want. If you have an NVIDIA card, in this situation, I'd recommend you use DLSS. If you have an AMD card, however, you're going to be using AMD FSR 2.1. Both of these are upscaling settings, which are actually running the game at a lower resolution and then doing some upscaling magic to make the game look like you're running at native resolution, but you'll be getting much better FPS. For both of these settings, what I'd recommend you do is click show more and just select whatever the highest quality is. For AMD, it's gonna be ultra quality. For DLSS, it's gonna be just quality, and then you can set the DLSS sharpness at whatever looks good for you. I'm definitely going to do a deeper rundown in another video on all of these different settings because there's probably some secret source that I haven't discovered yet. For me personally, as I said, I'm going to be running Fidelity FX CAS. Now, if you are finding this settings guide to be useful or informative, then please do consider subscribing down below. It only takes one click, really simple to do, and you'll get instant access to all of my content for Modern Warfare 3 moving forward. I've got things like config files lined up, NVIDIA control panel, gameplay settings that you didn't know you needed to change. It's it's all going to be right here on the channel, so go down there and click the button. VRAM scale target is a setting which a lot of people look at and instantly put to its max, so the game has the maximum amount of VRAM possible. However, it's not very good advice. This can actually cause a lot of hitching and stuttering. It even says it over here, uh, and the, the way to fix that is to lower the settings target. In reality, what you should be doing with this setting is setting it to around whatever the amount of VRAM the game needs to run. It's no surprise that we're going to be turning quite a lot of settings below down, so I'd recommend 60 as a good option. That's going to be uh, a little bit of breathing room so we're not actually hitting the target, but we're not pushing that target too far to the right, uh, therefore reducing the overall amount of hitching and stuttering. The next setting in here is a new one, variable rate shading. Essentially what this does is it lowers the quality of certain distant bits of the image on screen that don't need to have the additional quality that the game usually renders them at. And this does help with performance quite a bit. In fact, I'm currently testing running this on and it's giving me really good results. It gave me very good results in the beta as well. We might find that when we move to some of the bigger maps, especially in Warzone, that this might cause problems, but for now, I'd actually recommend that you turn it on. Texture resolution affects pretty much how everything in the game looks, except for shadows and some of the finer details. I'd recommend most people put this to low. The jump in visual quality from very low to low is ridiculous. They're not even comparable. Very low, everything just looks horribly blurry. Whereas going to normal and then up to high, it has pretty much no effect on the visual quality. You also gain a little bit of FPS dropping this down, so it's just a nice balance to get the game looking good and also running good. Texture filter anisotropic or anisotropic filtering as it's known in many other games is a setting that you should always be maxing out. It helps how textures look when you're looking at them from slightly uh, different angles as opposed to straight on, and it has no effect on performance, so max that out. Depth of field blurs stuff that you're not focusing on. It makes the game look nice and cinematic but as you can tell it's definitely not a setting that we want to be running it's going to really hurt visibility of anything in your peripheral while you're aiming down sights so make sure that this is off detail quality level judging by the images on the right here you might think that you want to turn this up because you don't want random floating bits of grass Honestly, when you're running around the game though, you're not gonna notice any of this and you do gain some nice performance turning this down. So make sure this is on the lowest setting. Particle resolution absolutely needs to go to very low. This is a massive FPS hog and it determines how good all of the particle effects in the game, like explosions, fire, thermites, how all of that stuff looks. You're not really going to notice this being turned down from a visual fidelity perspective, but the performance jump is insane. So yeah, make sure this is in very low. Bullet impacts don't have any effect on performance, but they do increase a bit of visual clutter while you're playing. So I personally turn these off. Just keep in mind, if you want to learn any of your recoil patterns in the firing range or just try out attachments, you will have to come and turn this back on to see those recoil patterns. Persistent effects are a very similar thing. It's the visual effects that are left when explosions and fire go off and you get those sort of 
dark burn marks on walls and on surfaces. I think it adds to the visual clutter, so I'd recommend you turn it off. Shader quality affects the lighting of the game and how it interacts with different surfaces. It makes the game look really nice, but it does heavily affect performance, so you definitely need to turn this to low. The only reason I'd recommend turning this back up is if you want to get some nice pictures of the game, especially of your guns uh, with nice camos and stuff. Turning that shader quality up just for a second to get that perfect screenshot can be very nice. But outside of that, make sure it's on low. On-demand texture streaming doesn't affect performance, but it will mean that you are going to be downloading high quality textures while you're playing, as well as taking up hard drive space up to 32 gigabytes for these high quality textures. Well, we turned our texture resolution to low. We do not care about this. Make sure it's off. Local texture streaming quality is an interesting one. It should affect how textures look at distance when you're looking at things from quite far away. Uh, turning this to low, it does help a bit with performance, but you'd assume it's gonna make those textures look worse. In fact, it actually makes things look a whole lot clearer. Don't know why? but just make sure you've got it set correctly. For shadow quality, it's gonna be the exact same recommendation as I gave for texture resolution. You wanna put this to low, so it's one above the very low setting. The jump from very low to low in terms of how the shadows look is a big, big jump. You don't have these grainy, blocky shadows anymore. Going up to anything higher than low, you're just getting diminishing returns in terms of the visual quality at the cost of a lot of FPS. So low is your best balance. Screen space shadows mainly affects the shadows that are cast on your gun and on your hands. I think that these are completely unnecessary. They make the game look a bit more realistic, I guess, but you may as well just turn these off. Ambient occlusion is a very similar thing. It adds these soft shadows where objects intersect. You can see the shadows under this car are a bit darker than the shadows over here. This can actually affect visibility if enemies happen to be, you know, proned in areas like this. So it's a big no no, make sure that it's off. Screen space reflections are not ne screen space refre screen space reflect screen space reflections. Yep, they look nice. They make puddles look realistic, but we do not need them. Turn them off. And static reflection quality, leave that to low. For tessellation, I didn't see this do anything in regards to visuals or performance or anything in Modern Warfare 2, and it's the same in Modern Warfare 3. You may as well just turn them off. Terrain memory is another interesting one. Turning this down has no effect on FPS whatsoever, and it just makes textures look worse. So I'd recommend you leave this at max. It's basically a free overall quality increase to your game. Volumetric quality, however, needs to be at its lowest. Probably the biggest FPS boost you can get in this game is turning this down from medium or high. It will affect how uh, sunlight and sun rays and fog and all those things look, but they're a massive effect on performance, so make sure this is on low. Deferred physics quality, a weird name. It basically determines how good water looks in this game. There's a lot of water, especially now that we can swim in water ever since Modern Warfare 2. Make sure this is off. Weather grid volumes affecting the quality of weather effects. Well, weather effects are visual clutter. We don't want them. Turn these off. And lastly, water quality, very similar to deferred physics quality. Just turn this off. Finally, moving on to the view tab, field of view. Make sure that this is set to a minimum of 110 FOV. You need to have that wide FOV to get as much information in as possible and play as good as possible. ADS field of view needs to be set to affected. It should be done by default, but please don't go changing it to independent. What independent does is it makes it so that when you ADS, it zooms all the way in to the standard low FOV setting. However, we've turned up our FOV and therefore we want our ADS to keep a nice wide field of vision so that if an enemy decides to pop up on our right, we can quickly transfer to him. We keep that information nice and wide. It also lowers that visual recoil and bounce that all the guns have, uh, so it makes it easy to actually stay on target. Weapon field of view is honestly personal preference. Go and try all three of them out. I personally like wide because it just moves the gun a little bit further away from me. Uh, really goes nicely with the wide field of view that we've set up here. Third person field of view for any of you guys playing third person, I would honestly recommend you just max this out, get as much info as possible possible, similar to the previous FOV value, and vehicle field of view goes without saying, put this to wide, keep your information as wide as possible. World motion blur, weapon motion blur, and film grain, make sure all of these are off and zeroed. Just loads of visual clutter, stuff which you should never turn on for a multiplayer competitive shooter. Could be good for a campaign, but in general, 
really, really bad. Keep them off. First and third person camera movement, put these both to least. This will just remove as much unnecessary camera shake that will get in the way of overall spotting enemies as much as possible. Third person ADS transition, we don't care about because we're not playing third person. Spectator camera, I'd recommend turning this to game perspective rather than the weird helmet camera thing. The last setting is inverted flashbang. This setting makes your flashbangs that affect you actually make your screen go black rather than going that bright white. Me personally, I've left this off because I'm just so used to the reaction of seeing a big bright white light on my screen to thinking, okay, I've been flashbanged. Whereas if my screen goes black, I'm probably going to assume that my game's crashed or something. But if you do find that this hurts your eyes a bit, having white flashbangs going off all the time, especially on some of those crazy multiplayer maps, then just come in here and turn this on. Now that we've covered all the in-game settings and your game's looking and running better, you need to go and watch this video next, where I'll take you guys through the best NVIDIA control panel settings for Modern Warfare 3 to push your game's performance even further.